Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast. Just talked about the Celtics Pacers series, but now going a little bit bigger picture, I am going to be giving my rankings for the top players remaining in the NBA playoffs in the conference finals. Now, I want to come out and say that this was, I think, through the top of it, a pretty straightforward um, picks for me. There were a couple sort of debatable picks in there that I'm sure some people will be possibly unhappy with. Some honorable mentions that I wanted to throw out there were Derek White, Jaden McDaniels, and Drew Holiday. I thought that the top nine were sort of uh, locked in for me in terms of they had to be there by any means. And then I really struggled with who to put at that number 10 spot. White, McDaniels, Drew Holiday, they all provide that two-way game and are incredibly important glue guys, but in, I, you know, somebody had to be left out, um, and I had to sort of put these guys to the side, but on that note, who were they edged out for? At number 10, I had Kristaps Porzingis, where... This is somebody who has been a massive scoring threat throughout his career, and I do think that his post-defense has sort of fallen a little bit under the radar. Now, through, just sort of as a disclaimer here, this is assuming everybody is fully healthy, which will definitely come into effect when we look at the top of this ranking as well, but Porzingis is, you know, a borderline all-star player, the part of the main reason I don't think that he did make it probably wouldn't have made it off rip, but in terms of he would have been in contention for being a reserve if it weren't for the fact that he missed as many games as he did. But he provides such a unique scoring aspect, especially to this Celtics team, that he's been viewed all season long, really, by a lot of people as the X factor for the Celtics. That if he can perform at the level that we know he can, that would be sort of the guarantee, guarantee that the Celtics could win the NBA Finals. And I still, st I still feel like even today, the Celtics are in a position where I don't think they can win the Finals against either the Mavericks or the Timberwolves if Porzingis isn't playing for them. Like we talked about as an example of Game 1 last night against the Pacers, late down the stretch of that game, the Pacers just continued to put Al Horford in these switches. Halliburton calling for the Miles Turner screen, the Celtics switch, everything typically. So just a situation where, and you know, in terms of, well, maybe you don't switch everything. Once you get to the finals, if it is Luka, if it is Kyrie, you can't afford to drop down on those uh, types of plays. So I have Kristaps Porzingis at number 10. Number nine, I have Pascal Siakam. I know he's not everybody's favorite player, but he is an incredibly effective scorer. We saw last night he was quiet in the first half, but all, all playoffs long, he has been so good at taking advantage of mismatches. And yes, we know that there are some limitations to his offensive game, but at the same time, he makes difficult shot after difficult shot and the way that he has been able to sort of extend his range out a little bit more, at least from the corners. Now, above the break, te other teams are going to live with him potentially firing away from three, but I still think that he is somebody who fits almost seamlessly into this Pacers identity. I don't even think the Pacers last night ran with as much pace as they would have preferred to but the scorer that Siakam is, and he's no slouch on the defensive end whatsoever either. I had to put him at number nine. Number eight, I have Rudy Gobert. Gobert is somebody who, depending on what style of basketball you prefer, you could have Rudy Gobert higher up on this list, or you could potentially try and even bump him off this list altogether because there is... He does seem like to some degree, especially when you come to the postseason and you're playing these teams in a best of seven series, there are some instances where Gobert may not even be able to be on the court if they are facing an elite level of spacing on the other end. And 
if there is nobody to hide him. So, you know, Gobert is one of the all-time defenders. Again, it feels almost, for me, I think it feels wrong to put him this low on the list, but I also, we are going to see the Timberwolves tip off against the Mavericks tonight. Specifically, once the Mavericks are able to get Maxi Kleba back in the series, which sounds like he is probable to return at some point, but we don't really have all that much of a timeline yet. I think that that could end up really hurting Rudy Gobert if we're to see a final series against the Celtics and Kristaps Porzingis is playing. Could be a similar situation there. But Gobert no doubt has a massive impact on the defensive side of the floor. So I had him at number eight. Number seven, I have another Timberwolf in Carl Anthony Towns, where Towns is somebody who is undeniably an all-star talent. Offensively, he is tremendous, and the leaps that he has taken defensively, specifically the role that he took on in that series against the Denver Nuggets, has to be you know very highly commended. Now, Towns was an all-star this year. Me, personally, I would have preferred to see maybe either one of the Kings players, really, in Sabonis or Fox over him, but that's a whole other conversation that I don't want to dive into right now. Towns is an incredible talent. He's sort of talked about the fact that he believes he is one of the best shooting bigs in the history of the sport. I think he said specifically that he is the best. And a lot of people sort of rolled their eyes at that. But the reality is he is absolutely a threat from the perimeter and causes tons of mismatch problems in the NBA. And we've seen him so far in this postseason do a really good job of being able to sort of hold up from a three-point perspective. And I expect that to continue on here. Now, he's not without some flaws in the fouls and actually being able to stay on the court which kind of drives me crazy is the second best player on the Timberwolves, but he's playing 32 minutes per game because of the fact that he has frequently gotten himself into foul trouble. And that is something that we have to see dip down if the Timberwolves are going to continue to make this run. And I have full faith in this Timberwolves team. I have them coming out of the Western conference finals, but towns, he needs to be available for them is the number one thing. And I ultimately had him seven here. I think that he is somebody you could definitely potentially put a little bit higher up. There is a debate with this next player here where I have Tyrese Halliburton at number six. Now, I think that this might even feel low for Halliburton as well. Again, outside of, you know, probably the top seven, I think are all, you know, legitimate all-star caliber players and even you could potentially try and throw Rudy Gobert in there I mean defensive player of the year take with that what you will but you know I think that this category here of Gobert, Cat, Tyrese Halliburton they all sort of have these somewhat glaring flaws that do sort of knock them down a little bit now I don't think that I'm getting too caught up in the recency bias of this but Halliburton was a sieve last night defensively where it seemed like when the Celtics offense was playing at its best it's because they were attacking Tyrese Halliburton as much as they possibly could and that's something that I think you know they stuck him on Derek White towards the end of that game and it seemed like White wasn't as willing to attack but that's something that if I'm the Celtics I'm looking to adjust to moving forward in this series but what was also really positive to see last night was the level of aggression was back for Tyrese Halliburton there's been plenty of conversations about his tentativeness over this the course of this postseason and last night you know the late turnovers is absolutely a killer for him and but he's a young player and he's going to continue to develop but I also do think there are you know learning moments that occur in the postseason and when I put this list together I looked at it from the perspective of if I'm trying to win a playoff series today who am I taking first? And I ultimately have Halliburton falling to six in this list behind Kyrie Irving as my number five pick. Kyrie is somebody that we all sort of know. You just kind of trust Kyrie in these big moments no matter what. And 
I thought I think he's had a very successful postseason so far. Now the conversations surrounding you know this whole identity of being a team player and the fact that he has been a little bit more passive at times and seems like he's been you know at least from a scoring perspective a little bit invisible. But he is he has done a very good job on the defensive end, making effort plays that we haven't seen from him before in his career. And ultimately, when it comes to Kyrie, if you are looking at one individual player to take the big shot in a Game 7, it is hard to find many uh, better options than Kyrie Irving. So I had him ultimately at number 5 in this one. Speaking of knocking down a big shot, we have the man from last night in Jalen Brown. Now, Brown has been... Obviously, an incredible player through a lot of his career. He's going to potentially be on the All-NBA team, probably third team. We saw him be selected to that last year as well. But one of the most impressive parts for Jalen this season was the fact that he was able to develop on the defensive side of the ball. And that's something that when he was first coming into the NBA, it was sort of a high point of his it was a high point of his game, but it seemed like he sort of almost fell off. That feels a little bit harsh, but at least in terms of his off-the-ball defense, it seemed like he got lazy at times, and he's definitely ramped that up as the Celtics have tried to buy into this idea of sacrifice and coming together, and Brown ended up getting multiple first-team all-defensive votes this year, where I believe he had three of which, so he ultimately got left off of the all-defensive teams altogether, but he's massively improved on that side of the ball, averaging 23 points per game on offense and hit the big shot for them last night. Brown is just somebody that I think can be, you know, any any team can benefit from having a Jalen Brown. He doesn't necessarily strike me as, I mean, he's somebody who could put up massive stats on any team but this version of Jalen Brown where he's playing a team game is just really fun to see in my eyes so I had him at number four now I want to get out here to say number three and number two are an extremely close call to me both going to be all NBA players but I went with Anthony Edwards here at number three I'll just get out ahead of it a little bit here he and Jason Tatum who I have at number two are ex extremely close matchups and I talked about this earlier in the postseason where I believe that Jason Datum today is the better player than Anthony Edwards now if you want to look at it from a trade value perspective and who's going to have a better career probably lean in favor of Anthony Edwards but there are playoff scars with Tatum that I think that he has sort of learned from where you know, Anthony Edwards could be sitting at home right now if the rest of his team didn't s step up when he was 6 of 24 from the field in a Game 7 matchup. And I think that ultimately for him, you know, he is an incredible, incredible talent. And I would say that generally speaking, I would call him a better scorer than Jason Tatum. But I think that Tatum does all of the other things a lot better than Anthony Edwards where he is a better passer, he is a better rebounder, he is a better defender on a possession to possession basis and that is not to take away from Edwards whatsoever because as we're going to talk about in the next segment, he is one of the, you know, faces of the league moving forward, but I think that right now and as we sort of get into it here, Jason Tatum is just somebody who I expect to step up in these big moments. And listen, if you want to throw the fourth quarter at me from last night, go for it. I still think that Tatum was incredible. He was a plus 20 on the court in a five-point win. And it was very clear that any moment that he wasn't available for them, things got worse. And you can make a very similar case for Anthony Edwards as well. I think that if you want to go the entire NBA outside of this playoff con uh, conversation, Tatum and Edwards are probably just about one or two spots off from one another as well there. But let me know in the comments section what your thoughts are. This was a very close call for me. And then number one, not really all that much of a debate, I feel like, is Luka Doncic. Now, 
the injury aspect with Luca, knowing that he's not fully healthy was the one thing that sort of made me second guess. So I gave myself a little bit of an out and said, assuming all of these players are healthy, it has to be Luca. And it's really not, again, I don't think that it's a debate when all these players are fully healthy, that it is Luca. Um, the ability to hit all of the big shots, just like Kyrie, be the big time scorer, the playmaker, everything about it. He can be an absolute hub of the offense, and we have seen improved defensive efforts from him as well. We know that he's a good rebounder, so all of it plays in. I think if you are trying to win a playoff series today, Luka, out of all of the players that are currently still remaining in the postseason, I think it has to be Luka Doncic, but let me know what your thoughts on my rankings are in the comment section. Uh, this was a pretty fun exercise to go through for me, although I know that a lot of people are probably going to be mad at me because all of this is pretty much subjective. But we are now going to be taking our second break of the show, and when we come back on the other side, I want to dive into the All-NBA, or we're going to talk about the matchups that we could see in the finals with all of these players, what the top best matchups and top storylines could be so stick with us and we will be right back 